Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. You should definitely consider hitting subscribe and the notification bell before you realise how fucking garbage this content is. And if this is not your first time on the channel, welcome back, although you may want to give your head a wobble. Let me first apologise in advance before we get stuck into the video. If you hear any crazy noise in the background, my pug has been extra needy today and decided to leave his morning feed until I decided to record this video. This is what I have to put up with. So if you do hear any crazy noises in the background, any grunting, any snoring sounds, it's probably that fucking idiot following me around. And as one final note before we continue, if you are looking to pick up any Yu-Gi-Oh singles or Pokemon ones for that matter, you should definitely check out Jam Jam Cards UK. They are the channel sponsors and there is a link in the description which will get you a nice cheeky discount courtesy of yours truly on their eBay store. But that's enough waffling on from me. Let's get stuck in to today's video. So for today's video, we are taking a look at the Magic Key Archetype. We're going to discuss them, have a quick look at what we've seen so far. This is relatively hot off the press. We've seen a few bits and bobs about the cards. We've got some translations out there now as well, uh, some rough names and all that good stuff. Obviously, it's worth noting this is coming from the OCG, so not all of it is going to be perfectly translated, but we'll have a good idea of exactly what we're looking at. The archetype so far seems to revolve around normal monsters, ritual monsters, and fusion monsters. An odd combination, but the deck looks like it could actually have some good potential. It does, however, have a downside, which is, is a mixture of attributes and mixture of monster types, although it does seem to use the attribute portion to its advantage. I guess in some ways similar to what we would see with Element Sabers or with Plunder Patrol. So we're going to have a quick whip through the cards. We're going to talk about what exactly they do. You may see me looking down in this direction. That's because I'm looking at my monitor and we can discuss what cards there are. I'll show them on the screen though for your perusal. Okay, so the first card we're looking at is Magic Key Sky Blaster Clavis. So this is just a 1900 attack, 1900 defense vanilla monster. It probably would have been more suited to like 15 years ago, but there you go. But it is a Dark Warrior. So there's some potential there, I guess, as always with these things that maybe has a little bit more synergy with external support that we maybe aren't necessarily considering at this point. I'm going to go ahead and read the rough translation flavor text. It's probably going to sound kind of weird as these things always do. So the flavor text reads, every person is brimming with potential. To go or to stop, to close or to open depends on yourself. There are many doors in this dazzling world. What opens them is a magical key. Two keys and one door. Two wills and one form. If the door is open, the world shall be connected. And an enormous power shall reveal itself. Very cryptic, ladies and gentlemen. And so far, that's the only normal summon of the deck we've seen so far. The only sort of real main deck monster, if you exclude the ritual monsters. Speaking of which, we'll go on to those now. Magic Key Blaster Batos Buster. Whatever that is. So it's a level 4 ritual monster with 2,000 attack and defense. Uh, you can ritual summon it with uh, the Magic Key Maf Maftea. Whatever that's called. If it's Ritual Summon, you can add a Magic Key card from your deck to your hand. You can only use this effect once per turn. And then once per turn, when an attack is declared involving this card, an opponent's monster with the same attribute as a normal monster or Magic Key monster in your graveyard, you can place any number of cards from your hand on the bottom of your deck. And if you do, negate the effects of that opponent's monster until the end of the turn. Then draw cards equal to the number of cards you've placed. That's actually a pretty fucking cool effect, if you ask me. Especially when you consider the deck could be played with potentially quite a number of vanilla monsters, depending on how people set this up. You'll be able to unclog your hands a little bit, which is a really nice touch. We also have Magic Key Cannon Garrus Vet. At level 8, obviously, you're probably just going to use two vanillas here, two level 4 vanillas. You can ritual summon this card with Magic Key Maftea, which is nice that you get to use one for all of these. It's, it's a pretty good touch, although it's more of a modern ritual thing. Again, it's attack equal to the number of different attributes in your graveyard times 300. You're going to use each of the following effects of Magic Key, blah blah blah, once per turn. When your opponent activates the effect of a monster with the same attribute as a monster in your graveyard, while you control this Ritual Summon card using monsters with two or more different attributes, quick effect, you can negate the activation. And if you do, destroy that card. If this Ritual Summon card is sent to the graveyard, you can add one Magic Key monster from your deck to your hand. We also have fusions that seem to mimic these in terms of levels and all that good stuff, so it'll be interesting to see what other cards come out that kind of complement this sort of ongoing theme. We have Magic Key, Summon Beast, and Silalalalalalalalas. Oh, hello, Bertie. 
Can you go away now? I'm trying to record a video. Yes, it's very cute. Really? I'm afraid you're just going to have to put this grunt in, ladies and gentlemen. He doesn't want to leave me alone. So one magic monster and one non-token normal monster needed to fusion summon it. So if it's fusion summoned, you can add a magic key math blah, 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 from your graveyard to your hand. That's the fusion ritual spell. You only use this effect of magic key summon beast and blah, 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 once per turn. And then once per turn, you can target one opponent's attack position monster with the same attribute as a normal monster or magic key monster in your graveyard and then change it to defense position. And if you do, it loses a thousand defense. And then you also banish any monster destroyed by battle with this card. And then our final monster to cover is magic key summon dragon and dribum. Bimbus. Requires a magic key effect monster and one non-token normal monster, so you can see where this theme is going exactly. So when it's fusion summoned, your opponent cannot activate cards or effects. Once per turn, you can target one normal monster or magic key monster in your graveyard, destroy all monsters your opponent controls with the same attribute as that monster. Once per turn, if an opponent's monster or monsters with the same attribute as a monster in your graveyard are destroyed by battle or card effect, and you control this fusion summon card using two or more different attributes as material, you can draw a card. So the deck is seemingly doing everything it can for consistency so far, which is a really big, important thing to any deck that wants to be successful. The archetype actually has inbuilt ways to deal with its disadvantages, which is a really nice touch, and that's exactly why so many people are hyping up the potential of the deck. Then we have the spell card that's been referenced a few times in here, Magicky Math Taya. So you can use it to fusion summon a magic key monster from your extra deck, using monsters on your hand or field as fusion material, or you can use it to ritual summon a magic key monster. So that's quite nice. It can do either depending on exactly what you need. A great utility card. If you control the normal monster, you can also send one normal monster from your deck to the graveyard as fusion material or as one of the monsters required for the ritual summon. That is potentially quite potent. Obviously, they've foreseen that there could be some problems with this card, the likes we saw with Brilliant Fusion, so they have limited it to being able to send a normal monster, but that definitely doesn't see us out of the woodwork. Of course, it's definitely setting up all those other effects that we see in the deck. Certainly, certainly a good card. We also have a field spell, just because that's exactly what every good archetype needs, a dedicated field spell. So the field spell is called Magic Key Unsealing. When this card is activated, you can add a Magic Key monster from your deck to your hand. The first time each non-token normal monster you control will be destroyed by battle or card effect each turn, it is not destroyed. And then during your main phase, you can add a Magic Key Maftea from your deck to your hand. Then place one card from your hand on the bottom of your deck. You can only use this effect once per turn, and you can only activate one copy of the card per turn. So again, they've done some really good jobs here of making sure that this doesn't get absolutely insane, but has a lot of potential nonetheless. And then we move on to our two trap cards that are in the archetype that have been revealed so far. So this one's called Magic Key Lock Unlock. So it's a counter trap card. When your opponent activates a spell or trap while you control a Magic Key Ritual Monster or Magic Key Monster, special summon from the extra deck negate that activation. And if you do, destroy that card. Then you can declare an attribute. And if you do, all face up monsters your opponent controls currently become that attribute until the end of this turn. And then naturally, this counter trap is a hard once per turn. Again, though, you are absolutely stacking the deck in your favour. This gives me even more reason to believe that this deck could be absolutely solid. And then the final card that we're going to cover today, Connected Magic Key. I fucking love the artwork on this. It's pretty cool. So you can target a normal monster or magic key monster in your graveyard, add it to your hand, and then apply one of these effects. You can fusion summon a magic key monster from your extra deck in defense position using monsters on your hand or field as fusion material. Or you can ritual summon a magic key ritual monster from your hand in defense position by tributing monsters from your hand or field whose total levels equal or exceed the level of the ritual monster. Again, this potentially provides some interruption during your opponent's turn. So as you can see, the deck has plenty of potential here. We've got a lot of really solid cards to deal with a lot of their inbuilt inconsistency issues and already mitigate that with their own effects. So I'd be interested to hear what you think down in the comments about what this deck is going to do, whether it's going to warp the meta, whether it's just going to be a solid pick or whether it's going to fall off the face of the earth before we know it. Once we have a bit more information on the deck, I'll probably release a how to play video so we can discuss the cards in a bit more detail, do some potential deck lists and all of that good stuff. It's worth noting that this isn't the only content that we do on the channel. We do deck profiles, how to play, tutorials, combo tutorials, and all of that good stuff.
If you are new to the channel, it's also worth noting that we have a giveaway on at the moment if you're interested in getting your hands on some freezing chain structure decks. There will be a link on the screen. I'll pop it up there for you to click on that you should check out if you're interested in entering the giveaway. But anyway, that's enough of your time taken up today. If you haven't already, you should definitely hit subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.